quilting and embroidery and crafting friends. Barbara from All Brands. I'm so excited to be here today with my friend. Hello, way. Barbara. How are you today? I'm ready to get crafting for fall. Me too. So excited. <laughs> Me have, too. I can't wait. We have some fun stuff to show today on the show with Heather Banks. Heather, you have uh, some baby onesies, right? Yeah, you know, I thought I'd play with some kids stuff today. We do a little focus on baby onesies. So for instance, I don't know if you know this, but in your PR 1055 10 needle, there are baby onesie designs, baby bodysuit designs that are already there that you don't have to purchase. With my design center, we can make our own baby designs to put on them. And we even, since we have my design center, we can take children's art and we can scan it into our machine and just make really cool, fun projects for kids. So we're just sort of focusing on kids. We're talking about hooping knits and the kinds of things you have to do, whether it's a t-shirt or a baby bodysuit. But we're going to talk about all of those kinds of fun things and be creative. I'm so excited. There's so much to learn. And this machine that we're going to be talking about is very exciting. This is the Brother PR 1055X. It's a tubular arm embroidery machine by Brother. It's awesome. And it's, yeah, it's got 10 needles on it and my design center. It is phenomenal. But Heather, I have a few announcements that I have to make before we get into the fun projects that you have. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So Brother has a promotion that's going on right now. It's 60 months, 0% financing. And that's for the um, October 7th through the 24th of 2022. This ends Monday. So this is for purchases of $5,000 or more. That's a really good deal from Brother. Um, so you could use that on the PR 1055X, which now just so happens to include a superstar side hustle bundle. So it comes with the stand, the Durky 7-in-1 um, hooping system, and the cap frame. But guess what? We have something better that's happening just 12 days from now. We're going to be offering 72 months 0% financing at the Houston International Quilt Festival. Um, and we're going to be there. All Brands is hosting the Brother booth. We're going to have Scan and Cut there, Designs and Machine Embroidery, So Steady, Westerly, Laura Star Brewer, and so much more. So please come and see us and all of your friends that you know and love from these great tutorials that we do. So Angela Wolf, Cindy Hogan, Wendy Chow, Emily Thompson, Joanne Banco, Reen Wilcoxon, Carrie Cunningham, Becky Thompson, Stacy Louie, Donnell McAdams, Katherine Clawson, Emily Dunlap, Colleen Sweatman, Barbara Jones, yours truly, Heather Banks, that's <laughs> on the show today, Barb Michaelichek, Allison Nash and Emily Cross. And here is our location. So it's going to be in Houston, Texas at the George R. Brown Convention Center. It's the largest sewing quilting show in America. And we're on the front row. So when you go in the main entrance, you take a left and we'll have a demo stage where we have continuous education throughout the event. So if you want to learn more, please visit www.allbrands.com forward slash quilt fest. I'll put that in the comments and uh, flash it on the screen. Let's see. Allbrands.com slash quilt fest. So what are you going to be showing at the quilt show? Uh, I'm so excited to be going. It is You have such an amazing booth position right there in front. And you have always have such a, a great location with so many things to look at. And I am going to be sitting over with the Stellaire. And it, and it, I know I can't wait to talk about it, show how it works and, and samples. And then every day on stage, I'm also going to get up and be showing the scan and cut and how it works with my connection. So I'm really excited about what I'm going to be doing. I am so excited. 
Very, very, very excited. Uh, one more amazing thing. So we hope to see you there. Um, also, if you're not able to make the show, which it's not the same, you have to come and see the beautiful quilts. Come and meet all the brother educators, ambassadors, and um, all of our friends. Uh, but if you're not able to be there in person, we are going to live stream the main stage. So just hop on over to that allbrands.com slash quiltfest page. And there's a link to register to be reminded when we go live virtually. So hope to see you there. One more announcement. <laughs> and this benefits you, all of you. Go <laughs> ahead and comment hashtag allbrands. And we'll be doing a giveaway at the very end of this broadcast. Um, so stay tuned for that. And sorry I was talking so much, Heather. I know you have a lot to show. Oh, no, I'm excited to hear all about Houston. Houston Quilt Festival is amazing. And I love that you guys broadcast it so that if you can't be there because you can't always go, you can still get to watch and see what's going on. I did last year when I couldn't go. I think it's a great. Yay. Hey, hey. look, Miss Maureen says, love my oh. connection. Yay, Miss Maureen. Definitely. Me too. It is such a great feature. I can't wait to talk about it more. <laughs> and Christy Gray says, I love, love, love this machine. I am so glad, Christy. This is a fabulous machine. And I know you could tell us about it as well. <laughs> All right, so just so to remind you guys, the machine that we're going over today is the Brother PR1055X. It is the top of the line multi needle embroidery from Brother. It is fantastic. Definitely. Yay! Okay. <laughs> Did we make it through the announcements? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so just ask some questions. If you have anything to ask of Heather, I'll be monitoring the chat. And uh, I'll ask those live. So get those questions in. Super, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Yay. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Thank you, Barbara and all brands for having me. And I love to talk about the 10 needle. I just love to talk about brother products. They're all pretty awesome. But I'm here talking about not just the baby body suits, the onesies, but hooping on knits because that can be a little bit of a challenge, right? Not only hooping them, but stitching them and getting good results. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We'll do some practicing on the baby onesies because they are so small and they can be difficult to hoop, but they're really not at all when you have a free arm, like a six needle or 10 needle or a PRS 100. Those really let you get all the way around the suit. So first thing I'm gonna talk about is that I am changing out my arm. And you can see here that I have the A arm. Now the A arm comes, uh, it's sort of the standard arm that you would use on your 10 needle, but you also got a B arm, not just an A arm. So we're gonna be using the B arm today. And the reason we're doing that is because as I mentioned at the beginning, we are going to use the sleeve hoop for the majority of what we're doing, although we're gonna talk about the other hoops. And the sleeve hoop is nice and tall, and uh, it, it has eight inches from top to bottom. So of course, you know that if you have a 10 needle, you have a four inch by four inch hoop, and you also have a five by seven inch hoop. So of course, five inches is wider than what you see here, but it does only go to seven inches. And the sleeve hoop lets you get eight. And check this out. Uh, this is a newborn baby bodysuit. And you know they're teeny tiny, right? They're just small. And this is no problem at all to hoop. So let me take you over to the machine. And I want to show you because there's not only baby bodysuits that you can hoop with this. Obviously, it's called the sleeve hoop, right? So you can do long sleeves, you can do jeans, you can do pants. And we have designs that are built into the PR 1055 that are just for this purpose. So let me very quickly take you over to the 10 needle screen and I'll show you what some of those designs look like in case you're wondering. Oops, sorry. I just moved it off of my screen. Back we go. All right, here we go. Let's go to the screen and I will show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here we are. So if I go into this very first category with the butterfly, 
I have a lot of, of designs here. I'm just going to scroll down so you can kind of see that there's a lot. Well, what you may not know, and I have my B arm up, so I am in position here on the screen for this two and three quarters by eight inch hoop. There are several things that fit perfectly in it. So I can use this design. I can use this design. And let me make them a little bit bigger so that you can get an idea of what I have. So this is a really, really pretty floral design that looks fabulous on the side of jeans, I think. We had this one too, so this as well. So what I'm showing you are designs that are very easy to put right into that sleeve hoop. So don't just think this is limited to children's items. It's definitely not. But here are two. Here's one that I just held up and showed you. So this one will fit perfectly in the sleeve hoop as well this one. And I will show you this stitched out as well. I love this one. So both of those work really well in the sleeve hoop. This one as well. So you can see there's quite a few here. Think When you think the sleeve hoop, think pants, think sleeves. Uh, let's see, I think it was this one that I was thinking about. This one just needs to be rotated, but it fits as well. So there's quite a bit right here in the machine that you can use. All right, let's head over to the uh, overhead so you can see more of what I'm talking about. Now, let me move these. This is the A arm, and I'm just going to move it out of the way since I have the B arm on. Here's one of those built-in designs. And then here is another, that other built-in design. And it's just so cute. I mean, I gotta be honest, this is just adorable and uh, makes me smile every time I see it. So right out of the bat, we know we have these two designs that will work perfectly with our sleeve hoop. Let's go ahead and pop this out so you can see more of how this works. So I'm going to just take this out. I had just set this up to demonstrate and show you what we could do with it. Now, can you use your other hoops when you are putting in something like a onesie or baby bodysuit. Definitely. Here is another one that I stitched using my design center. These are all built-in shapes, and then I use the decorative fills to fill in the shapes. Now, with something that's a little larger, and this is not a newborn, this is 12 to 18 months, you can use your five by seven inch hoop, and I'm, this is what I have right here, and if I remove the top and I put this in sideways, you can definitely still do this. Now notice there will be some stretch on it, but honestly, it will come back. I mean, it's unlikely that this, this won't be an issue. People do it all the time. I've done it. You can put it in like this and then you can hoop it like this. So can you do this with a five by seven hoop? Absolutely. Did I, I did all of these instead with the sleeve hoop. And that's kind of going to be my focus because it's such a cool hoop. And I didn't mention this specifically, but I think I probably, you're getting the idea that the sleeve hoop is not included. So that would just be an extra. All right. So we have this, we have the one I showed you before, and we're going to go into my design center and we're going to talk about how you can do this. Additionally, you can use your machine to stitch out very tiny little fonts and get very nice results. So this is the back of a similar baby bodysuit, and I did it here on the back end. And you can see these are built-in fonts that I was able to get really nice designs, uh, and I was using this as well. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about stitching because when it comes to knits, that can be a bit of a frustration for people. So what are some tips and what can we do to make this work well? So first thing I'm going to tell you is that I always recommend the first time you're doing things, especially with something tricky, do practices. For instance, here is that built-in design. And if you take a close look, you will notice that my outlines do not line up with my uh, designs. So the outline of the rabbit, there's some space around it. There's some space around my squirrel. This isn't ideal. What I want is that really nice one that I showed you a minute ago that I stitched out where my designs are just butted right up against this. The placement is fantastic. So what happened between here and here, because it is exactly the same design, and the answer would be stabilization. 
When we're dealing with woven fabrics, this isn't nearly as much of an issue, but it definitely is with knits. What is the trick with knits? Knits are stretchy, baby body suits are small, and they pucker if they're not properly stabilized. And then we get the space or misalignment where these, the outline stitches are not close together. And then we also get issues with fonts where the fonts sink in and the fonts can, you can actually get a bird's nest, it can rip the fabric. So what are some of the things we can do to avoid this? So here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you some tips. So the first thing is stabilizer. And I really, like I said, recommend practicing not on your actual bodysuit because um, they're, they, you know, cost money. So I recommend practicing on something of a similar weight. And that is what I did here. So I did this in three different stages. Now you won't always need to do something this extravagant. Uh, just one practice to figure out the right combination works. But I wanted you to see what I have here. So this is three different examples. This one is two layers of stabilizer and then the knit fabric that resembles the baby bodysuit on top. There's only two pieces of, of tearaway. What happened was when I did one layer of tearaway, that's when I didn't get the proper alignment. So I knew that wasn't the correct formula for what I needed. So I thought, okay, let's double the stabilizer and only use tear away. The benefit of tear away is when I'm done, I can rip away all of the stabilizer and I don't see a shadow of anything left behind. So great thing about two layers was no puckering, no distortion, no pulling, and all of my lines uh, lined up with the actual design perfectly. I was really, really happy with two layers of stabilizer. But because we're talking here, I wanted to do a little bit more playing. So this is an example of sticky back stabilizer, and it is tear away. So it's tear away sticky, and I stuck my fabric down on it, stitched it out. Lo and behold, I could not tell a difference. They look just the same for two layers of stabilizer or tear away or sticky back. Last thing I did was I fused on cutaway because traditionally when you use cutaway, you're told, to, or excuse me, when you use a knit, you're told to use the most stable stabilizer and that would be a cutaway. So I fused cutaway on the back and then I went back and I looked at my tearaway and I said, did I get better results? Should I really be using the, the cutaway? But I'll be honest, I picked this over with a fine tooth comb and they look just the same. So I decided to use a two layers of tear away for what I'm showing you today because I got really great results. And as I mentioned before, one layer, mm -mm, that was not good, nearly enough stabilization. So let's set that aside and let's hoop something. Hey, so Heather, we do start? have one oh. question. Yeah, uh, please, Barbara. Yeah. Um, uh, so Anne just was asking to clarify, does she, she says medium weight tear away question? Ah, good question, Anne. Exactly. This, what I'm using, I'm going to pull it up right here, is medium weight tear away. You could use a heavier version, but I found that doubling up a medium weight seems to give me less pull, less contraction of the fabric, a little bit nicer results. So yes, this is two layers of medium weight. Any other questions, Barbara? Oh, uh, we had a great comment from Ann Philbeck, who's reminding everyone who watches to don't forget to like and share and subscribe to our channel if this is nice. helpful for you. Thank you, Ann. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. We got teeny tiny baby bodysuit here, guys. If I were trying to hoop this with my five by seven, which I just set the other piece aside. If I were trying to use my five by seven, this would be a really big stretch. <laughs> you can just see here on either side. I love, love the sleep hoop for this purpose. So here is what I'm going to do. The layers I'm going to put in my bottom. I'm going to slide in two layers of tear away, and then I'll put this on top. So that'll be the layers that I'm doing. Before I do that, I want to come up with some kind of placement for this. So what I do, and I fully admit that there are so many ways you could do this. So if you have other suggestions, I am all ears. 
and uh, this is just one way I like, and we fold it in half. I'm looking to match up my the ar underarms and down at the bottom. And then I like to take my pin right at the crease and put a line, and then right at the bottom and put a line. So this is a washable, water-soluble pen. Perfect, that's what I like. Then I will open it up, and I like to draw a line, grab my ruler, from top to bottom, just so I know where my center is. Could you press this with an iron? Absolutely, lots of different things you could do. But I'm gonna just draw a nice little line, just so I can see where I'm approximately in the center. So there we go. I know where this is going to be. Now I will be taking up the majority of my hoop. And I think you can kind of see that the hoop pretty much goes from top to bottom. So I'm not going to necessarily be able to say place my design down here or go up here if it's, if it's a design that takes up the whole hoop. And that's something to keep in mind. So all I'm going to do is take the bottom piece slide it in and look how perfectly it fits. I mean, it's just, it's made for this really. I'm looking to straighten this up. Then I'm going to take my two pieces of tearaway that are just slightly smaller than the bodysuit. And this is going to just come straight up inside. Now I don't have to worry yet about anything being precise. There we go. Now I'm gonna look at the bottom. Make sure that everything's lined up, that basically my stabilizer is going just over the top of my hoop. Now at the top of your hoop, there is a little notch. See that notch right there? I want to, not, to line that notch up with my blue line. So I'm gonna lay this down and I'm gonna peek and say, okay, that is lined up at, with that line. The notch and the blue line are lined up. So let me move this out of the way so that I can have some space. I will bring this over and I'm going to start at the top just where that notch is. So now my notch is lined up with my blue line and I can see that. And then I'm gonna move down, down as I go. Now, I didn't get that straight. My notch is here. Oops, you can't see that. My notch is here and my line is over here. So all I can, I can do very easily is when I lift this up, keep my one hand here, let this lift up and just gently pull this in the direction I need it. And I'll lift this up so you can see that what I have now is that I have this notch lined up with this blue line and this notch lined up with this blue line. So because my design, at least in most of the ones I'm working with are taking up my entire hoop, I'm not too worried about placement up and down. This is gonna be the entire thing just like this. So we are ready to take it over to the machine. And here you can see that I have this hole so that they will, we will not be stitching on the underside. Anything else, Barbara? We good to go? Like that. We got some really sweet comments and some questions. Right. Uh, let's see. Here's one from Janice about general hooping. Uh, Janice asks, is there a trick to hoop a pre-made pillow cover? I ended up removing the stitches along the side in order to hoop it. The pillow cover is 17 by 17. Okay. I would say there, the trick might be to that you need to uh, make sure that your hoop can't be quite as large as your pillowcase because since it's a woven, it's obviously not going to stretch like this would. So if you can, so I'm assuming it has maybe like an envelope back or a zipper back. So you're sliding the bottom piece in and then uh, placing this on top. So I, I'm assuming she has a multi-needle. With a multi-needle, it would be very easy because this piece would sit on top and this piece would go into the machine. Great answer. Thank you so much. I was stumped on that one. <laughs> I, was yeah. a, I was thinking pillowcase instead of pillow cover. Here's a comment from Fran, just sending you some love. Heather, I love how you teach. Do you have videos for the scan and cut? I would love to learn, especially for cutting fabrics. Oh, Fran, you were reading my mind on what I'm working on. Thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. Thank you. And we, I think we'll even touch on the scanning cut today. 
Oh, goody, goody, goody. So, um, you folks were asking, I know I've heard this, if you if you wear it, don't tear it. Tear it. Something. But how does that apply to the onesies like you've been using? Well, I'll tell you what, what I, like I said, I felt like what I needed to do was a little testing because that is sort of a generic rule, the entire, if you wear it, you know, don't tear it. In general, um, I think it's a good rule but when we're dealing with these little designs, as long as we have enough stabilization to give us the results we want, I do think that you can go either way. It's somewhat of a pres personal preference, I think. But prove me wrong. You know, like I said, I, I did some testing just to see. And one last comment from Barbara yes. Jones. <laughs> she says, a day full of distractions, and now I get to oh, be in my happy place. Heather's clear instructions and helpful hints have sent my stress far, far away. Love, love, love the All Brands Show. We love, love, love oh, you back, Barbara. Absolutely, Barbara. Same to you. Thank you so much. Oh, you guys are awesome. Okay, so what I have now is I've made sure that the bottom of the onesie is not captured underneath, and it has slid all the way back on. Like I said, I'm using the B arm. And now let's go over to the screen and look at some things we might do. So let's go ahead. I think because we looked at the, the ones that are built in, I think I'd like to go into my design center. So down here in the bottom right, if I select my design center and press okay, let our machine come into position. Then what I had thought about was we have so many different options already built in. So for instance, I'm going to go pull up the shapes. And if you liked the one that I made that had the hearts, and this was definitely one of my favorites, we can use background fills really on anything we have here and just fill in the hoop. So I'm going to go ahead, let's might as well use hearts. I liked those. So we'll press the heart, say, okay, now it's way, way, way too big. So we'll go ahead and size it down, get it to an approximate. I used four, we could do three, we could add a name. I mean, the sky's the limit with my design center. And that's why I love it because there's just no limit to what you can do. So maybe I'll try like three hearts. So there's one. And then I'm just going to duplicate it, put it in the center, and then we'll go ahead and duplicate that one as well. And the reason, oops, that I'm moving it to the center is now that we'll all be lined up. And then I will move this one down. And yeah, I think three look great. They're, the four looked great too, but like I said, there's no real reason you can't do as many or as little as you like with what you're doing. The nice thing is that you have this outline of the sleeve hoop. So I know exactly how much design space I have. Now I also, when I designed this, went into the shapes and in the open shapes, I saw this really cute bow right here. And I did use that. So if I say, okay, again, these are all coming in really big no problem. We will size that on down. I have that visual on the screen so I can see exactly how big or small I want it. At this point, I have not assigned stitches to any of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it up. Oh, I guess I could put it in the middle. Now, if I want to move something again, I need to clear anything away from it and go to this little box down here. It's sort of a dot dashed box press the one that looks like a oh, flashlight stylus and then I can touch my heart and I'm just moving it down a little bit. I'm making this up as I go. Uh, let's see. I might have overlapped my heart shape with that. Let's see. Okay. Nice benefit. I have undo. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this until because what was happening was my heart and my bow were overlapping and I want my bow to be unattached. So I'm just going to move it out. Touch my heart and move that down a little bit and then we'll place the bow there and call it good. So I'm going to move my heart down. Then we'll go back, select our bow. There we go. 
and move it into place. As long as I don't go off of it, as long as it has that red box around it, then it's still selected, which is perfect. But like I said, I really enjoy and appreciate the undo button in my design center. Okay, something like that. Let's go ahead and give all of these shapes stitches. They have satin stitches assigned. So I'm going to press the uh, menu and I think I used a triple stitch, change the color. And then what I need to do is press the paint bucket and we'll just fill, turn all of these purple. It's more of a sound that you hear versus seeing it. And then I'll go to my fill stitches. Now what I found was not all of them are created equal for small shapes. So I push my paint bucket, drop it in the heart, press next, and this may be bigger than I want, although actually in this case it's fine, but I can make it smaller here. Let's just actually add something else. And I did not, I see right here my bow is still not purple. Okay, let's go choose a different one. And I think I used something like this. This, I don't think I used it, looks good to me. Press the paint bucket, put it inside, and we'll press next to take a look. Looks good. And then we'll return and pick our last one. And some of them are just very large, so you can't see the design. And some of them work perfectly. I think I like that. And we'll press the inside. Let's see what all three of them look like together. And that looks great. So this is a, just a really fun, different way that you can play and have fun. Ah, Tracy, I'm so glad that you're thinking about the sleeve hoop for, for onesies. I just looked down and saw your comment because it's just such a perfect design hoop for things like this. Keep in mind, you have a lot of options. This is very much design software on a simplified version. You can take the fill stitches from a triple stitch to a single stitch. You can make the, the shapes wavy, wonky. You can turn outlines on and off. You can change the direction. So my fill can become 45 instead of straight up and down. And that's really cool as well. Let's look at this closer. So at this point, you can see just in a couple minutes, I made something completely custom that nobody else has and nobody else is doing. I can always watch it stitch out. Uh, if you want as well to see the order, so you know the order of what's going to happen. I just love this. I think it's super fun. Can you use the sleeve hoop on the persona? Okay, unfortunately, uh, you cannot, Renee. That's a good question, and I didn't say. The sleeve hoop is designed for the six needle and the 10 needle. So there is, unfortunately, that aspect for the persona. Good question. All right, close that One, up. Uh, just for her, we, we do carry the uh, Durkee for brother, uh, uh yeah. seven in one set that may be a good option for you christy absolutely good good point so i'm glad you brought that up because that is an excellent other option we could be showing all right we got this one done and it's ready to stitch out we can let's go to the stitching side and we'll give it a little bit of, just let you guys see it stitch and then We'll uh, go on. I want to show you a couple other things that you can do here. But what I would do is press set. It's going to tell me that it's all done and it's ready to stitch out. And I'm just going to make all the colors the same. And that's at least what I did in my example that I showed you. You can certainly do anything you want. I just love this design. I think it's so cute. I'm going to press edit ends and embroidery. And we currently uh, it's telling me to change oh i did pick a different one oops wrong one okay so i'm going to be here i want you to see this really quickly i chose the wrong color that was just me and let's go ahead and do blue which is three so i'm just changing both the needles to the same color all right so very quickly let's stitch out the first heart you can watch it go and then we'll move on to the next one
Okay, it looks like we have a question from Fran. I'm not sure the answer to this one. Um, Heather, maybe you know off the top of your head. Uh, will the sleeve hoop work with the PR650? Let me see if I have that in front of me. Uh, I can look it up too. The 670 course, because it's the newer version. It's a good question. And I'm thinking, I think you have to give a reason why it wouldn't, to be honest. But, you know, we want to. It does. It, <laughs> it does. works with the Yay. 650, okay, 655, the 670, the 680, the PR1000, and the PR1050, and the PR1055. <laughs> Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Okay, let me stop this really quick, and we're just going to, um, oh, I, you know what? I forgot one thing I wanted to tell you about this, and so I'm glad now that I thought about it. I'm going to go ahead and cut my threads, because I forgot one thing that I really like to use with this. I have it sitting here, and I just forgot to put it on, and that is a wash away uh, topper. So this is another type of stabilizer and it's something that will just wash away at the end. And I really, really like to use it with my knits and I just leave them sitting here so that I can stick it on top and start stitching. And it really helps to give you very crisp, very nice results at the end. But that's okay. We will use it on our next one. So I'm going to, oops, where am I? So we can see here that it was starting to do my hearts, which is great. Um, I have a camera so I can line this up later. Let's go ahead and keep going. So we have my design center. We have options. Here was something else, as I mentioned before, that was built in, built in shapes. You can add names to this. You can add dates. Lots and lots of options available to you. So I'm going to pull this out. I have to go the wrong way. Sorry, hold on. I'm going to rip my stabilizer just so we can get the hoop. Okay, so we're back here. Now, the next thing I would like to show you is, hmm, which direction do I wanna go? We have two ways I can go here. Another thing that I'd love for you to see is that you can also take the designs that you make on the 10 needle, save them to a flash drive, and pull them up in software. Now, you may know that Brother has the Snowman sticker, which allows you to line up perfect placement on your designs. So if I take something like this T-shirt and I want it to be perfectly lined up with the camera, if I place my Snowman sticker here, then when I go to hoop it and stitch it out, it will be perfectly lined up. Additionally, what you can do is open your design and here I stitched out a name and then when I went to print it, it will automatically print with the snowman sticker in place. So instead of me having to take a snowman sticker and place it in the center, I can then cut it out, hoop my uh, project and then place this directly over it, tape it in place and use the snowman sticker to line it up. Now, before we go there any farther, I, and it, well, there may be questions, but I'm going to pull out another thing that I really love, and that is the scanning frame. If you have a Tenio, then you receive this because you use it with the camera. And in this case, I'm going to take a drawing, and this is that hoop that you saw me, or sorry, the apron that you saw me use there a minute ago. And I'm going to take my drawing, and I'm going to place it in the bottom left corner and then I'm going to take a couple of magnets just to hold it on. Now this does not have anything to hold on to it on the machine. I'm just going to take off the B frame and then put this directly on it. So let me show you what that looks like. All right back to the machine. I'm going to come inside and take off these two screws takes just a sec to take them off. Then I'm going to lift the B arm off and I'm going to put the frame, the scanning frame that I just mentioned in its place. So this also just slides on. Let me look for, there's one. Just have to find them. Well, hold on. 
one, two. Okay, so once it's just sitting here, then I'll take those same screws that I had a minute ago and just put this directly on. So it's a very quick and easy change. And I have to tell you, I mean, there's kind of no better present for someone than their, their child's own artwork stitched out. And that is what we had done here with the artwork. So there is this really great option with My Design Center as well. And since Christmas is coming up, this makes a fabulous customized gift. All right, let's go back here. So I'm gonna press the home button and I'm gonna go back to My Design Center. And this time I'm going to press line design because I just have a line design here. I just want to get that line design scanned into the machine. I'm going to press scan and press OK. Give it a second. Oops, let me come back so you can see it move. Oops, I took off my needle plate cover. It's a smart machine. OK, so with your machine, you get something that looks like, you know what, this a little black plastic cover and it protects your needle plate and it just sits right down in here. And the machine prompted me, I picked the right camera. Good, there we go. The machine prompted me and told me that I didn't have it on. So there we go. Now it's in place and you can go back to scanning. Press scan, press okay. All right. Oops. So if you have artwork, uh, this is a great way. And it does not, of course, have to be a child's drawing. Children's drawings are wonderful because they're fun and easy to scan in and put on things as gifts or just things to remember. But it could be your own artwork as well. It could be things that you have taken, maybe a PDF drawing. It doesn't have to. I'm not an artist. So it could be something that you're not drawing as well. But line art works great. Heather, yes. can I, um, I'm like a little ADD and I love going <laughs> down little rabbit holes. Okay. <laughs> and this sparked my, this is kind of like the new Art Spirit app that came out where that you ah. can download for wireless machines and yes. draw on your phone and then transfer wirelessly to the machine, your line drawing from your phone. Absolutely, Barbara. And it's probably no coincidence that Art Spirit was released for the 10 needle today. So oh. I know that I already have it on my 10 needle and I use it this morning. It works flawlessly. And I was able to open up the Art Spirit app, send things wirelessly, do my own drawings. So yeah, if you, especially with a tablet, something maybe a little bigger, you could give that to a child and let them draw and send it wirelessly. Yeah, so this is what it's called here. Um, if you have a wireless machine, um, you can go ahead and download this this mm -hmm. app on your Google or iPhone or yep, whatever Apple you Store. have. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> and it also has, I think it has free downloads every week and inspiration in the magazine that's on the app as well. So you get projects. Project. Yes. Very there's, fun. There's, it's growing. So it's just starting out. It's growing every week, every month. And I've noticed they're keeping it seasonal. So there's Halloween and Thanksgiving right now. And uh, But I, I have to tell you, I was excited. Oh, so Anne, you were just thinking about um, that as well. I'm glad you guys both brought it up because, yes, we still have the uh, Design Center scans, but... Now that we have Art Sphere app, we can just draw, send over, and it's also another way to get our artwork in. Um, Miss Maureen, you use it on your Luminaire. <laughs> it, it works with an iPad, Marion, but not a computer. Is it's an app? It's an actual app. Yeah. Great questions. All right, I just got really excited when I saw the line drawing because <laughs> of that. Yes. Too. Yes. Brother, and you can trace your line drawings too. So if you're not an artist like me, you could open up Art Spira, open up an, a line drawing and trace around it and add your own details. Very so really, cool. There's a, lot. there's a lot. Okay, let me go back to our screen and it's finished scanning. Took a sec there. And let me show you what it looks like on the screen. 
So, and now it works for the still air too. Yes, star. And I think I saw Patty. Yes, I forgot to say it is also now available on the still air. So, woo, brother got all of the machines out. I love it. <laughs> I love all right. So, I have my, my picture right here. I'm going to use my arrows and drag that in. And, uh, oops, it's not dragging. There we go. Just cropping, just getting rid of the magnets and whatnot. I am going to change this before it ever enters my design center. I am going to pick the outline stitch that I want. I really liked it in a triple stitch in addition to that satin stitch that you saw on the apron. So we'll go ahead and just time we'll just do a triple stitch, press set to put it in and now it's there. Let's go ahead and rotate it. So we're looking at it correctly and I'm going to get rid of the background. Now we're just looking at what we will scan and I like it. Let's go to the next page. Now, one thing I did in the apron to enhance it is I went into the shapes and I randomly picked one. I just used the star and I resize that all the way down to something small. And it was just a fun little ad. You know, I could fill it. It could be a fill stitch. It could be a, um, could go with one of those decorative stitches again. You know, again, really sky's the limit on what you want to put in it. But let's just say I wanted to fill it. Uh, I got to get on the other side. It's teeny tiny. Let's see if I can do it. There we go. Let's see what it looks like like this. Okay, so it's a line drawing with a fill stitch. I mean, that's just super cute. It's it's just up to you. What do you like? What do you want? What works for you? Uh, what do you like to enhance? So I'm going to go ahead and press. I think I'm done here. Again, we can make changes, but we're just the point was to show you how you can do this. There's even one more thing you could do with things that are built into your machine. And if I go to add and shapes, I can absolutely create something very cool around the outside of this. You know, I can do a frame. There's lots of frames that come with this. This may not be the right one. It may not be what we want, but then I even have something even more cool that's custom as well. Just gonna go ahead and delete that and press edit end. So now you can see here we are with a custom design. That one is a fill stitch, but as I showed you before, this one, I just love doing this, is a, a satin stitch. So there we go. Okay. Anything, any questions? Art Spira or um, and tablet to use my, I'm having difficulty signing the app. Uh, Mary Ann said she was having difficulty signing to the app. Cindy was kind, Cindy Hogan is really our, our expert at this point. She's taught it so many times in class. She was saying that she recommends signing in on the, uh, sorry, let me move back signing in on in brother or excuse me not in the brother account don't do your brother account do it in you get a choice of doing it in apple or google i believe and those were the ones that we were having much better luck with having ideas that you can share um let me know if that's kind of where you were going with that we were having better luck doing that <laughs> i just want to say Guys, if this video is helpful for you and you enjoy this content, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up now. Um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel um, so that you can learn more about um, sewing, quilting, and embroidery. Fran made a yeah. comment earlier. <laughs> she says, not enough time in the day for all this fun. <laughs> Fran, you are right. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to fit it all in, too. It's a <laughs> great point. Uh, and Robin says, this is a good lesson. I haven't used my PR 1055X, my design center yet. You're giving great, great ideas. Excellent, Robin. And work keeps getting in the way. I noticed Patty said, amen. <laughs> Although my work's pretty fun, so I can't complain. <laughs> Okay. Oh, it's so much fun. Great. Um, <laughs> let me show you. How about if I show real quick how you can cut an applique from the PR on the scanning cut? 
great because yeah, because there are custom, there is a custom alphabet in your PR and I, you may not know this, that is an applique alphabet and you can put it on the screen and it looks fantastic in that sleeve hoop again, spelling out a name straight down and then you can cut that fabric on the scanning cut and then come back and do it on the machine and I love it. All right, Very let me cool. show you. All right, you guys are awesome. I could live in my design center. Miss Maureen, that is pretty cool. You probably know this backwards and forwards. All right, let's go back here. Going to go back to the home screen. And if I go here to the decorative alphabets, these are those the large ones. They're bigger than the fonts. If I go to this one that's yellow, and I think that's orange, that's an A, B, this is all an applique alphabet. And what I have found is this is a striking, really fun alphabet that, like I said, you could just fill up your sleeve hoop with. Let's go ahead. And I know earlier I did, I did one. I'm trying to think really quick. I'm going to go ahead and do, you can keep it large. You can go medium. You can go small. For our sleeve hoop, I'm going to go small, press set, then go back to add. And I'm going to add, just going to spell out Kim. So I'm going to go small again, press set, and uh, you can see here that I've got, here's my K, here's my I, and then I'm going to add in the last letter. There's the M. I'm going to go ahead and take that down to small. Now you can resize even after you get it here. So notice here, if I go to size, I can make these even smaller. So you may be thinking, oh, I'm only going to be able to get a short name in there, but not at all. You can make these much smaller. The, uh, the point is I want you to see how they can transfer over. So once I have a name and I press edit end, if I press memory and my flash drive, I can now take, go over to my scan and cut and everything is ready. Let me show you how this works. So I'm going to take this out and through the magic of TV, I'm finally going to go to my scan and cut and let me move this out of the way. Okay. Here I am at the home screen and I'm going to put my flash drive in the side of the machine and then let me change my camera angle so you can see the screen. I think at least better. Whoa, that's pretty shiny. Okay, this is fairly good. Let's see. If I start here and I press retrieve data and then I go to the flash drive, I'm looking for the B pocket where we uh, all of our saved designs from a brother machine go. Here is Kim that I just spelled out. You can see that. And if I press the applique badge, there are my letters. I don't have to do any converting. It is the perfect size. And I'm going to press set. So there's my first letter. Then I'll press add, press I and set. Here's my second letter. And then press add, press M and set. So now all of my letters are here and ready to stitch or to cut. Obviously, if I wanted them to all be different colors, I could do that. I would just move them to different parts of the screen for my fabric. In this case, I think I'll just go ahead and very quickly show you how you can cut this out and put it on because actually this is a this is a really pretty uh, applique and I can show you what this looks like because I may have stitched it out while I was playing. All right, where is it? It's kind of hidden itself for me. Aha, I found it. All right, so what I did was my intention was to stitch this out on a baby bodysuit that already had uh, quilting in it. So what I did was I stitched something out with, uh, excuse me, a tear away, two layers of tear away, a batting to simulate that, that quilted bodysuit, and then knit like I would over the top. And this is just a really pretty, pretty applique alphabet. And this is what it looked like when it was finished and it does a great job. So again, I can't recommend enough the first time you do one of these things to just use your scrap fabric instead of your good fabric or your good thing. All right, let's back this up and put our fabric, put, let's go ahead and put my mat in. Okay, fabric, did you walk away? Maybe, oh, no, here it is, okay. 
So I have taken, in this case, I'm going to use a fabric that has a fusible on the back because when I'm working with applique like this, I like to be able to iron it down before I start stitching. So I've removed the paper from the back. I'm going to place, place the fusible straight down on top of the mat like that. And then I'm going to do a background scan really quick. And I'll show you the bodysuit that I'm talking about. So if you purchase something, you aren't limited to just thinking about onesies or baby bodysuits. Here's one that I've purchased. I can open it from the bottom. So just like one of those onesies, I'll be able to put it in the hoop. And then my intention is to stitch the name, the applique name straight down. So it's just kind of another idea of how that works. Let me come closer, move my letters up. like that, press OK, press cut. I'm using the standard mat and the standard blade and I'm gonna go ahead and press OK to start cutting. Oh, glitter vinyl, that's a really great idea, Christy. This would look really good in glitter vinyl. What fusible do I like, Shirley? I honestly promise cross my heart, not saying this because I'm doing this for brother, Love Brothers Fusible. They have a fusible that is just out of this world. But I also, you could use Steam uh, There are other options that work. Or sorry, Heat and Bond. Scratch that. Steam Seam I don't like as much. It tends to come off onto the mat. But Heat and Bond works well at also. There are a little trial and error on these. But I love the Brother Fusible. Okay, let's take that off. There it is. It's simple, it should be that fast and easy. Pull this up and then we will do a placement stitch so you can see what this looks like when it gets in there. So there we go. Really, really clean, crisp edges and uh, easy to do. All right, anything, Barbara? In the meantime, I'm gonna come back here or take this off. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove my scan mat. Again, no need to worry that, oh, I have to take off my mat or put on a different um, frame. It's a really fast and easy process. Yes, it thinks that I need a bigger frame. It is correct. Well, we do have one question, but it was about the uh, Artspira app. Heather. Yes. Uh, Tracy was asking, so do you have to have a wireless machine to use the Artspira app? Yes, Good but- question. Brother just came out with a full line of um, wireless embroidery machines at the entry yeah. level price. And then the top of the line already has the wireless capabilities of it. So there's an option for wireless for everyone now. And I'm very excited about that. You are absolutely right. I, I mean, this whole midline that Brother came out with that's wireless is just so awesome because you're no longer... Um, you know, just have to get wireless with the top of the line, although it's there and it's great. Uh, sorry, I'm looking for backwards. Uh, you have lots of options at all different price points. Yeah. So we're actually going to have the new version of, um, I know this model number is very popular, but PE770, PE800. Those have been replaced now by the PE900, which is wireless and accepts the Artspira app. Definitely. Uh, sorry, um, <laughs> I have so many things here <laughs> that I'm digging for the appropriate thing. I'm going to go ahead and just grab this stabilizer and I'm going to take this guy and we're going to hoop him up. And like I said, I'm just going to open the bottom like I would on a baby bodysuit. So this is really convenient and easy and just going to be so cute with a name. So I'm going to slide this over onto the right side. It's even easier to get the stabilizer in on this one than it was the smaller guys. So I'm just going to sort of fold that up a little bit, slide this in, and I'll be able to see it from the top and bottom as soon as I get that up there. There we go. Of course, now you're probably thinking, why doesn't she just unsnap that? 
That would be a good answer, right? Okay, but I would like to see where it is on the side. So I have placed a couple of marks here and here, just thinking that I, I think I want it to be around that area. Where's my top? Here we go. Let's take a look about where this will be. Keeping in mind, now since I have marked the center, I'm going to line it up with this dot, uh, mark. I'm not quite sure what to call it here. So let's see. And I'm going to sort of rock it in, but I need to see it a little better. Okay. So I'm going to start at the top and then I'm going to pull this to the side until my line is marked up with the dash at the bottom so that I know it's straight. And then that wasn't quite straight, so I'm going to give it another little bit of a tug so that it is. And there we go. That looks straight so that it goes in like that. Then I'll need to countersink it when I come this way. I'm going to push it in this way, come this way, push it in this way, and I can tighten it up a little bit as needed. And we are ready to put the really cute lettering on just making sure that it's tight enough because the worst thing is you don't want to be stitching because and it's too loose that it pops out while it's stitching but then you can we see have, oh go ahead barbara we have a question from miss maureen she asked um is there a reason why you're not unsnapping it for this one? <laughs> that's what i was saying right because it seems like it would be a lot easier if i just unsnapped it and laid it flat uh yes i think absolutely um in this case we can unsnap it I'm just thinking of it like a yeah. bodysuit, so I was hooping it in a similar way. Got it. Because if it didn't have snaps on it, you could still do this. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So if it didn't have snaps, let's just say it only had snaps at the bottom, but this was just one piece. This would still work perfectly, but yeah, you guys, you know, there's no reason I couldn't unsnap it. Just picturing it like it is a real baby bodysuit, so sort of more like this. Good question. Fair, fair, fair question. Let's just say that. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back so that it won't be hanging down. We can and use our imaginations. It. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair question. Why is she not just unsnapping that? And then uh, back here. So we know I'm going to go slide it onto the machine. There we go. Back to the B arm and the B hoop, or it's labeled B for the sleeve, so that I know this is all hanging down here. Now, one thing we haven't done is we haven't used, oops, let me see this. Oh, okay, so let me do this, show you this. It's telling me that I need to change to a larger embroidery frame, but I can see up here that I do not need to. What's happened is that it's just not centered in the sleeve hoop. So if I, this is gonna let me recenter. That's all I need to do, but it may not. It may think, so I'm gonna cheat the system a little bit and I'm gonna move the arm out just a tad. There we go. I just wasn't all the way in place. All right, good to go now. Uh, just tighten down those little knobs, press okay. And now I do wanna get this centered because it isn't going to work well where it is. So I'm just gonna press this, oops, wrong one. I need to group it and do that. So I'll go to the group button, group all, press center. And now they're all centered in the same place. So I'll press edit end and embroidery. Now. Let me do one more thing. If I come back here, there's two things I can do. One is color sort. If I press color sort, now all the applique placement stitches are together, all the tack down stitches are together, etc. I'm not going to need the tack down stitch because I already cut my applique. So I am going to go back a screen and I'm going to press this one that has the paper and the two spools. And when I get to applique position, I'm going to turn it off, no sew, because this is the tack down stitch. 
So all the tack downs just got turned off. That is one of the really amazing things about the PR1055 is that now when you come here, look, I turned off all the tack downs. They're not even visible anymore. Placement, tack down. Let's go ahead and just do those place, a placement stitch and then we'll, we'll do a finishing stitch too so that you can see what this looks like because it's a really pretty applique. Wrong. Okay, so we do have a few, just one comment from Ann Philbeck that was cute. I saw yes. she said, I've been embroidering all day. Oh, <laughs> yay. Good for you. And that was Ann who said that? Yes. Can I say lucky? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lucky, lucky. Best therapy all right. ever. Take this out. You can, if there's any questions or anything, let me know, but I'm just going to walk this over here. Put this down. Okay. I have a fun story from Patty. Oh, I'd love to hear. Okay. Patty says, I used the new Art Spirit app with my NS2850 last night um, and stitched out my daughter's signature. She thought it was nuts when I sent her the picture of the stitch out. She thought it was so cool. Oh, that is so cool. That makes it, that just makes it right there so worth it. And did we say, and we might need to, that it is completely free. So you, you, as long as you have one of those brother wireless compatible machines, it's totally free. Okay. You need a little small craft iron of some sort to get into the sleeve hoop. Uh, and then all I did was I ironed it down inside the placement stitch. And let me just show you what the finishing stitch looks like. And then, Barbara, we've kind of come to the end of the different fun little guy things we can do. All right. <laughs> Oops, I need to change back. Hold on. It's stuck. What am I stuck on? Okay, let's try that. <gasps> I've got it at an angle. So let's try this. What am I catching? Just on an angle. All right, there we go. Okay, so basically you can see that I have my K and I've got my sleeve hoop back in. I've got this all back. Put this back where it goes. And I'm going to move back to my main screen and I'm just going to go ahead and move forward to uh, just to applique around the K because I just want you to see how, what that looks like. So press OK, unlock. And I think what color is it we're using? Yep, that's good to go. Oops. And I'll show you close up what this looks like because it is a really, really nice stitch. I'm going to move my camera. Oh. Hold on. Way back there. All right. I'm going to wait because it is too not clear enough. That's a nice luminaire you have there, Heather. It's so amazing how easy and great these machines work. They're user friendly, they're fast, they're efficient. They have a great dealer network and a warranty program. They're just fantastic. They really do. Machines. Okay, getting close. Pull it off here in just a second, show you. But this is a, just a really nice applique feature that is built in, like I said, to your machine. So mostly what we focused on today are things that are built into your machine. So yes, the sleeve hoop is separate, but you already get the B arm that comes with it. And then so many of these things, whether it's my design center, the no sew feature, the applique alphabet, 
the, uh, let's see, the fill designs, you name it, all those things that come right into your, with your machine. So a lot of times there's extras you want to buy and you should. I love the extras that you can get for your machine, but there's so much that you can do just directly with what comes inside of it. So I wanted people to know that and know that they could have fun and feel confident with that. Love this machine. <laughs> All right, almost there. Okay, so if you haven't yet, everyone, please comment hashtag All Brands. We'll be doing our giveaway very soon for a $50 allbrands.com e-gift card. Um, Say and... that one more time, Barbara, sorry. Oh, uh, everybody comment hashtag allbrands.com to be entered to win a $50 allbrands.com e-gift card. And I'll do the drawing very soon. Yes. Let me pull this out and show you what our applique looks like. Oh, that would not be a camera where you can see me. Let's try that again. Okay. So it's just a really pretty, and I'm going to just do this. Uh, it's, it's got a, you do not need to make your scan and cut, cut larger. Sometimes I know people will increase the size of their, their fabric, but you absolutely do not need to do this. This will create a beautiful applique. And then you can definitely spell out someone's name right on their onesie. So it's just fun. This is gorgeous, Heather. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Yay, you're so welcome. I was so pleased to be here today and come back to the camera. So glad you had me. I always enjoy talking with everyone who comes and watches and talking with you, Barbara. So thank you. Ah, and I'll see you in 12 days at the Houston International Quilt Festival. So oh, excited. Me too. <laughs> me too. I can't wait. Hopefully so get to I see a lot of people. <laughs> I've worked up the best deals of the year. Everyone knows the best time to buy is at the Houston International Quilt Festival, and they're under lock and key, <laughs> so no one else has pricing except for me currently, and no, I'm not telling anyone until the <laughs> quilt festival starts, but we will be emailing a... Um, a flyer without prices on it that Wednesday before. We're going to be having 72 months, 0% financing on a number of machines, including the PR10 needle that you saw today. Um, we're going to be doing 20% off of accessories. So if you like that sleeve hoop, we'll have that there. That will be 20% off any brother branded accessory at the show. And yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. Ah, so Me too. Fun. It is just so much fun. Just like five days of jam-packed fun. <laughs> yeah. So here's a really sweet comment uh, oh. from a watcher. I've had the 1055 for a year now. Didn't know it did half of the things being shown today. So oh. happy to hear that. Yay. I'm so glad you were here. That's great. <laughs> ah, Miss Maureen. Yay. <laughs> Yay. She loves her brother products. Nice. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and with Artspira now, this is like a whole new game thing going on. We with the wireless machines and and sending things your own designs. There's no limits. I know. I'm so excited. And brother is really at the forefront of technology. They do. Of all the manufacturers. They really do. They are. They. It's amazing. All the new stuff that const they're constantly coming up with. Yeah. All right. Well, let's do a giveaway. I'll bring up the giveaway screen. And good luck, everyone. Good luck. We're going to draw a winner. And Jungle. our winner is Fran. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. Yay, Fran. Please email me at events at allbrands.com to claim your prize and congratulations. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Heather. And thank you everyone who joins us each week. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We're on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and LinkedIn now. So we'd love to see you join us each week. Definitely. Thank you, everyone. 
Yay, yay, yay. All right, well, Heather has a, a special invitation that I'll show now, but we'll see you in 12 days, Heather. Bye, everyone. Can't wait. Bye. Hi, I'm Heather Banks, and I would like to invite you to the All Brands booth at the 2022 International Quilt Festival being held in Houston, November 3rd through the 6th. Quilt Festival is the place for sewers and quilters to gather once a year. And you gotta go if you haven't been. You can find fabric, notions, and of course, sewing machines. I love to go not only for the shopping, because I am definitely about the shopping, but I also love to see all of the quilts that have been made by people from all around the world. I maybe someday could aspire to that kind of greatness. Now, All Brands will be hosting the Brother booth, and they will have packages like you can't believe. Not only do you get sewing machines, but they throw in all kinds of extras. They do this once a year, and these are the best prices of the year. So if you've been holding out at all on getting a sewing machine, this could be the time. I will also be one of the educators doing live stage demonstrations for the entire show. This is a wonderful piece that, that All Brands offers where you can get free education in their booth. So calm down, say hello. I'd love to get the opportunity to meet in person. It's easy to register online. You just go to quilts.com. So I'll see you at the 2022 International Quilt Festival at the All Brands booth.